Tanika Drake, yeah, that's right. Hey everyone, welcome to God's Gift Through His Word. Thank you for tuning in and keep coming back for more inspiration. tuning into God's gift through his word today. So as you have been listening, I have been releasing uh, portions of my book, uh, The Gift of Fighting God's Love, Guilt and Shame Turned into My Shine. Now your girl may have fumbled over her own words. Um, <laughs> if that is the case, I of course will go back and do it again at a different time. However, I wanted to read it and get it out and I just know that when I did that, I found old feelings about the entire situation as I read through it. Not old feelings of scaredness or fear, just old feelings of what I was going through at the time. There was so much going on, and at the time, I was a different person. I really had a lot of transformations that's happened since the book in 2018 and we were heading into 2023 so that'll be five years ago and I had a different mindset a totally different mindset and when people say that you have to think of yourself a lot more than you do That's exactly what I wasn't doing. And let me tell you, there's a lot. There is a lot that goes into people's mindsets that accept or in a different in a different type of saying that stay and believe that the relationship they're in is going to change. It's going to get better. It's going to blossom into something that they ideally, in their mind, they want. They love that person, but the person does not love them in that way. And that person continues to harm them. See, there's a lot that goes into that. And when we think of people, sometimes people still, to this day, (laughs) as much education is out there, people still have a stigma about domestic violence people still want to shh don't talk about it and I find that even for me even though I put my some of my story in a book even mentioning it oh well you know (laughs) and I don't take offense at any of it I just know that when people say certain things it just comes from a place of not knowing it comes from a place of no understanding and that's why education and educating people on different aspects of different things that my life uh, exposes is to help. It's to help with the other voices that are out there uh, really trying to change the narratives and the myths that have run for so long because it is not for us to hide and stay silent. It is for us to speak up and speak out. That is the only way that things change. So as you may have been enjoying the different segments that I've been releasing, 
I thank Pastor Jay for encouraging me to do this years ago, and I didn't. And for a newfound uh, mom at the Men of Tomorrow Academy from the 100 Black Men of Phoenix, that encouraged me in her own way to release this. So as I continue releasing this, know that my book only has five chapters. So today's chapter, chapter three, I hope that you will enjoy. And as I share, it's not going to be just me. I have some commentary from some other podcasters who have chimed in. So you will hear their voices as they share maybe some experiences, some thoughts, just different aspects from some men that I really appreciate that when I was doing a DV segment, they came through and shared and their information and their thoughts that they share will always be invaluable. So as you listen, I hope you get something from this and remember domestic violence is not nothing to run away from as far as discussing it. It is more so to hit it, hit it face on. But when you're in that situation and you are leaving, once again, you must maneuver with the utmost of silence in that regard and in that regard only. You never want to tell a person in an abusive relationship that you're leaving. That is the worst possible maneuver you could do. There are people who have lost their lives from saying they were going to leave or the person found out they were leaving and it did not go very well for them. And I will share this this snippet, this story as many times because it hits me hard sometimes. And for those of you that know what Clubhouse is, that audio platform, I remember I was doing a speaking and they were having a type of speaking contest and people were sharing. And I shared my story within the time allotted to me. And I remember that one of the judges who was giving critiques said to me that her mother had been killed from domestic violence. And she said, I wish that someone would have told her that she should have left when it was safe to do so. And she's always mentioned at that time that there needs to be an explanation of how to leave. And I will do my best to showcase and share how I did it. Now, this may not work for everyone because domestic violence is not cookie cutter. However, the tips that I give can help you to maneuver in your own life, in your own situation. You know that person best. You know your situation best. You know your area best. And you know the different types of options, people, and assistance that you specifically can pull on. All those things are very important and imperative when you're leaving. You need to know who your people are, where you're going, where you're staying, and all of those things. So remember, you get your EPS together, which means either you choose that E as an exit, execute, or escape plan strategy. Make sure you have your time nailed down. Do not back down off that time for anything. If you say you're leaving at 1 o'clock, then you're leaving at 1 o'clock. Pardon me, there was something trying to creep up, you guys. Then you leave at 1 o'clock. You make sure you have all your important documents ready. You make sure that you've already gone to the schools. You've already gone to the vet. If you have a pet, you've already grabbed all the important documents and records that you will need. You've already signed the kids out, signed your pet out. You've already made the transition. You want to do this stuff very, very quickly. If a restraining order is something that you need necessary, you need to make sure that that is passed out and given early in the morning and that you are going to be leaving shortly thereafter either way it goes there needs to be a plan and position in everything you do so in one of these episodes when 
it's over I'm going to sit down and I'm going to lay out everything that I did to have my WPS which was I had to write and plan and strategize you need to do that before you have an EPS which they always say have a safety plan and that's the basics just making sure you have all your things together where you're gonna go all of that then EPS goes a little bit further into the details and it really goes into knowing the person their schedule and how to move if you don't have that stuff together it'll be hard to leave because you need to know everything about that person and since you've been with them for a while you need to see when is the optimal and specific and a good time for you to leave and then by that time have your stuff packed and ready to go without causing any kind of confrontation without causing an argument without saying hey i'm leaving without any of that remember and i remind everyone when you're leaving an abusive situation silence is golden silence is platinum silence is diamond whatever type of ruby or precious metal it is that it is that precious to keep your silence at that time because you need to be safe and you need to make it out alive so with that i hope that you will do those things and i will have more insight during this time And I just wanted to say a quick prayer and then enjoy, enjoy the show. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, as the listeners come by to listen, Lord, I pray that the book that I am sharing, The Gift of Finding God's Love, Guilt and Shame, turn into my shine. Lord, I pray, pray that it's a blessing to someone. I pray that, Lord, it can help someone to understand they were not the only one or the only one going through this and Lord when people are telling them that they're crazy or saying other things that aren't helpful Lord that you guide them in how they're supposed to maneuver and operate Lord I pray that you allow them and show them and guide them and lead them on the way out of a place that they feel there's no way out Lord and they feel that they're trapped and that it's dark and there's no one to help rescue them Lord you are the rescuer Lord you are the provider Lord you provide ways out and Lord you provide a light to our path so Lord I pray during this time for all those men and women Lord, that they would come out of those situations, those abusive situations, Lord, that definitely do not serve them, Lord, nor do they honor you. So, Lord, it is my prayer that domestic violence across the globe would be just eliminated, Lord, destroyed, so that that nasty situation, Lord, no way would have to go through anymore. So, Lord, I pray that this book would share and help others to find their strength, their courage to be brave and to leave situations that don't serve them. And Lord, that they don't stay for the kids, that they don't stay because they don't want to be statistic. Lord, their lives are more precious than statistics or how people deem them as being a single father or a single mother. Lord, help them to come out, be strong, courageous, and brave. And Lord, Help them to listen, Lord God, as you give them instruction on how to leave their situation. Lord, I pray for all the saints that are going through these types of situations, Lord, and certain pastors and certain people in the pulpit and other people in the church have told them to stay. Lord, there have been people that have stayed and have lost their lives. So, Lord, I pray that those that are leaving and can leave and get out, Lord, that you help them, guide them, and watch over them and keep them. In the name of your son, Jesus, I pray, and I count these things done. Amen. You guys have a blessed day, and enjoy the show. Hey, what's going on, Janika? I really appreciate your show, as always, and I just wanted to say I, I, I appreciate what you were talking about tonight because it's something that I've been thinking about and it's the silence and audacity, the audacity to uh, do things and then it's, it's always 
supported by silence. And I've been thinking about this in a number of different ways, but um, in relation to what you were just talking about, uh, it, it really does. I mean, the audacity to take, you know, the scripture and to abuse people with it, but it's only supported by the silence. And you see that in so many ways, you know, when you hear about the different abuses of the church and like you said, in the home um, and everything else that's going on uh, in our society today. It's, it's just uh, so much of it is audacity and people being silent in the wake. Usually when uh, someone speaks of domestic, domestic violence, the first thing that comes to mind is a husband that's abusing his wife. And that is very real. No doubt about that. But something that is also very real is domestic violence where the, the wife is abusing the husband. And, you know, when I first even thought about that concept, it was kind of like, mm, that couldn't happen. That couldn't happen. Because I'm thinking from the standpoint, okay, well, the guy is normally bigger, physically built than the woman. What guy is going to let a woman abuse him in a marriage relationship? Well, I was naive in my thinking. And when I became a pastor and began to counsel with people, that's when I found out the real deal. What I found out, found out was that though it is not as common as domestic violence, the husband abusing the wife, that it is something that is a reality for some men. And, you know, my thinking was totally okay. Well, physically, the man is usually bigger than the woman, so that couldn't be. No, it's a different type of abuse. Many times it could be mental a mental abuse, a, a wife is mentally abusing her husband, maybe always putting him down, maybe uh, pointing out all of his errors. You can't get this right. You can't do this right. When are you ever going to be? Whatever. And it could be other things as well. But that is abuse. And that does happen. And um, yeah, so that really changed my changed my viewpoint as well as my heart. I have a heart of compassion now towards men that may come to me because they are having issues in their relationship of this nature. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who Show the moon where to hide till evening. Whose words alone can catch a falling star? I know my redeemer lives. I know my redeemer lives. All of creation. Testifies this life within me cries. I know my redeemer lives. The very same God that spins things in orbit runs to the weary, the worn, and the weak, and the same. Gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken. They conquer death to bring me victory. I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify that life within me cry. I know my Redeemer lives. Chapter 
chapter 3, The Do's. There are 11 helpful do's. Number 1. Do prepare in your mind a worst case scenario and plan for it. Number 2. Do let law enforcement be aware of the situation and start reporting the incidents. You will start getting incident reports as proof there has been domestic violence that will become a record and a log for you. Number three, do let family and friends that you trust know about your situation. Unveil who this monster truly is. Number four, do know you are none of the evil names, gestures, disrespectful, mean, and nasty things that your significant other calls you. Do know you are strong when you survive abuse from your abuser. Do understand that you do not deserve to be treated poorly or hit on ever. That's number six. Number seven. Do know your worth, women and men. A person that has to resort to hitting is trying to control you. Number eight. Do know that they cannot control you unless you let yourself be controlled. Number nine, do let your employer know if you are employed. You will be surprised how employers are ready to help a valuable employee. Number 10, do remember to enjoy life. Number 11, do remember to do hobbies, crafts, sports, or anything you may have stopped due to this person's behavior. Trust that God will repay. Vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. So, after writing this particular chapter and sitting and thinking about what I did do, I was so (laughs) embarrassed and afraid of what my employer would say at the time I was working for the state. But I found that the employer that I was working with were extremely concerned and my manager and my supervisor they were both agreeing that I should leave they weren't kicking me out but they were saying the job will always be here however the job can't be here if you're not alive and my manager she had pulled me into her office and told me she had to start over at age 40 (laughs) she had to start over And she was telling me about her personal journey with domestic violence. And then my supervisor told me about her personal journey with domestic violence. And she had four kids. And she stated, if I can do it, you can do it. And she was also a person who had a nonprofit. So all of these things to say, the dues that I learned, they were very, very hard for me to to learn and know but there's a do for everyone and in your own particular situation you have to know that you have to do what is right for you and in my situation for me and my children I did the do's that were right for me The sun is always shining. There no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky, many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. The answer to question one has to be looked at in a broader sense. In any kind of relationship between men and women, each one should make their intentions known. 
and especially if either one has been through any kind of abuse, they need to know what the intentions of the person who is coming into the relationship, one that has been abused and the other, the one who may not have been abused, but needs to understand the person has been abused. Yes, definitely. You need to make your intentions known when coming into any relationship, but especially when someone has experienced something as severe as domestic violence. It's never good to hide anything. The fact that you've been through it and the fact that what your intentions are when you find someone has been through it, it can be very dangerous when you don't disclose everything. So yes, being transparent is the answer. Being unevenly yoked is simply pulling in different directions. When Christians find themselves making covenant relationships with unsafe people, they are unevenly yoked. It's not about being less gifted or more gifted. That's the covenant of a relationship in body of Christ Jesus. Both are anointed. But this thing that we go marry and covenant ourselves with those who are not in the body of Christ is very dangerous. You're pulling in two different directions. You serve two different masters, whether it's male or female. Being unevenly yoked is not good. You won't get where you're going by making a covenant with a heathen a non-saved person. You can only get there by covenanting yourself with somebody who believes in the blood of Jesus Christ and the salvation that was offered at Calvary. Then you can pull together. One may be more talented and gifted in an area than the other, but the anointing is the same that's on the both of you. So being unevenly yoked, that's not the answer. Finding out that in the beginning is the answer. This deserves a part two. A man finds himself unevenly yoked. What is his options, if any? Well, if he's in a covenant relationship, which is marriage, and God honors even the civil marriage, then by the Bible, he has to stay. Um, we're, if, if there's abuse, that's one thing, but we're not talking about that. Your question was, what should he do? His option is to stay. But since he doesn't know the covenant God, then that may not happen. That relationship may not be able to continue. But the obligation that he made a covenant before God and man still stands even though he doesn't believe in God. But as we know, divorce rate is high among Christians as well as non-Christians. So taking that covenant relationship serious is the first part, whether you are heathen or whether you are a saved person. But there is no option for him. He should stay and try to work it out no matter what. But working it out through Christ is the best way. Good morning, good morning, everyone. So at the end of this, I wanted to uh, make sure that uh, if there is someone struggling with domestic violence or a toxic situation, and maybe you don't really know if you are in that situation, uh, you can definitely call the domestic violence hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. The numerics to that 7233. And remember that it's never okay to be hurt. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody deserves to put you through verbal abuse, physical, financial, spiritual, psychological, emotional. None of those abuses are worth it. So please do uh, call the number. And I have also in the notes uh, that you guys can check out, I've also put the link to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. If you have questions about what you're in, definitely tune in to that check it out and search out for what you need and I hope that if anybody is in a situation like that that you get the courage to leave because that is the only way to keep yourself and your children and others that loved ones that you have safe so please remember please leave when it is safe to do so God bless stay safe Hey, this is T. Drake from God's Gift Through His Word. If you have enjoyed listening to this podcast, please do me a huge favor. Please share it. Please like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, God's Gift Through His Word. And share this podcast with someone that could use some encouragement 
If you like what you hear, and I hope that you do, I just hope that you would share it with many, many people, your friends, your family, co-workers, whomever you know might need a little pick-me-up. And also remember that it's never okay to be harmed. So if you also have someone who might be, you may think, going through some hard, challenging times, send them over here to get a word of encouragement to lift their spirits up because everyone can use a word of encouragement and sometimes it's hard to get that inspiration when you're going through. So please, if you like what you hear, give us a five-star rating, me, (laughs) over on Spotify or anywhere else. And if you would be so kind as to follow, it would be most graciously appreciated. And if you want to answer a question, please, if you're so kind and you see that little question in Spotify for the community questions, and you would like to answer the question about what you thought about any particular episode, I encourage that. Please do. I definitely want to know who's listening, and I always want to get a chance to respond. So if you do, I might even share you out on the podcast. So please do once again, share this out. I am happy that you're here. I'm grateful that you're listening. And remember always what I say, to be blessed, motivated, and always inspired to do what God lays on your heart. You guys have an amazing day. Thank you for continuing to show your support and your listenership by tuning into God's gift through his word. Have a blessed one, you guys. God bless.